Hey, Marco. Hey. We're ready for you, man, whenever you're set. All right, let's do this. It's time. We are gonna do an unboxing video. I am so excited about this, and I am so excited to share this with you. This is my brand new Sony Cinema camera. This is the top of the line, creme de la creme, Sony Venice camera. We are gonna unbox. Oh, that worked out. Well, let's get into it. Okay, that was some footage that we just saw from this very camera. Three of my top reasons why I bought this camera. And the first one is gonna be this operator menu. This is such a fantastic idea. If I'm doing any kind of running gun or ENT style shooting, or even if I'm on my steady cam and I don't wanna mess with the, uh, too many of the settings, I don't need the viewfinder uh, to change any settings. It's all right here. I've got my frame rate, I've got my shutter angle, I've got my ND, my ISO, and my white balance all right there. Plus, I can even do playback right here, so I don't need to go to any of the other menus. I don't need to dive into any of the menus. It's all right here in front. Reason number two, the mount. Now this is a pretty solid PL mount, which is, you know, just wonderful industry standard mount. But sometimes I need to use other lenses. So Perry recently came out with their new LPF mount. You can put that in here by removing this, and behind it is an E-mount, a lever lock E-mount. So now I don't need proprietary Sony Venice to something else. It's just an E-mount to whatever lens I want, whether it's the LPF, whether it's Canon EF, whether it's Nikon or anybody else's lens. Easy to get to, easy to find third-party stuff. All right, let's go to the other side. Now we're on this side of the camera. This is the assistant side of the camera, and this is pretty cool. I'm pretty sure they didn't copy this from Mary. Right, Michael? Okay. <laughs> so, so what we got here is uh, some of the same functions that are on the other side, including the frame rate, ISO. By the way, this has dual ISO, so if I come over here and say change base ISO, we're gonna change it from 500 to 2500. Uh, the other thing that we can do, and I've got all the licenses currently loaded in here, the slow motion license is currently not out, but as soon as it is, it's going in this camera. And what we have, if we come over here, to the menu is that we can choose up to the full frame 6K. Now, I have no idea what they call it full frame because seriously, what's it full of? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it is 3.2, and when you're using the entire sensor on the Super 35 lens like this one, you get vignetting. You probably uh, get... Which is why we put the Allura on this. Mm -hmm. We're not idiots. <laughs> we wanted to show you what he's We doing. wanted to show you what we're talking about, and to, uh, I'm gonna fix something right here on the monitor. Now, you can totally see the vignetting on this lens. There we go. Of course, as you zoom in, you get to fill out a little more of the frame, but you still, even at its maximum zoom, still get a little bit of vignetting along the edges. This is good. This really is a true multi-format camera. You can shoot at uh, uh, 3.8K, which is UHD. So any of the television stuff, this is more likely what you'll shoot. But you also have standard uh, DCI uh, full frame. And, you, and these surround views is actually kind of cool. So if any of you happen to remember what it's like to shoot with an optical finder, just outside of your frame lines, you'll be able to see what's going to happen before you hit your actual frame. So if you set this to surround view, then you'll be able to see what's outside your frame, like the boom on the top edge of the frame. It's pretty pretty awesome. Uh, there's a couple other resolutions for anamorphic. The 3.2 sensor actually has one advantage when it comes to anamorphic. It's actually the perfect size for a 2x anamorphic lens, and we are gonna show you some really cool anamorphic footage.
Hey, Marco, that was great footage. We love what we saw. Uh, all of that was shot on this Sony Venice. And uh, just to introduce myself real quick, I'm Michael Melendez, owner of Blue Ribbon Digital Media. And what we're gonna show you today is taking off this PL mount and the E mount that's underneath it. Uh, so let's get into that, but let's do it in a time lapse and speed this up. All right, so as you can see, we have this E-mount lens on here, and what's great about the E-mount, actually, before I say that, what I, I think it's really important, that little uh, pin lever here, the reason it's there is when you slide this, this locking tension lever over, it stops, so that way you have to make sure you have, the, have your hand on the lens, and then it'll come off. Otherwise, if they didn't have that there, when you rolled it all the way over, it, every, your lens or your mount or whatnot would just pop off. Um, so, We'll take that off, and then you can take any adapter. And this is E, Sony E mount, to, on this case, EF, Canon's EF mount, but it could be an adapter to anything, right? So, plug this thing, lock this thing in there. Now we're on Canon glass. And I'm not exactly sure why you'd want to put this on there, but you might. Maybe you have a cool macro lens that does something fun or uh, whatnot, but it's gonna work the same. Now let's talk about the back of the camera. These connectors are pretty cool because they're very standard, which allows this camera to be used in a variety of situations. You have four SDI outputs, including a monitor out and an HDMI. If you're crazy, who uses HDMI? Anyway. <laughs> four, four, but in addition, you have addition, a monitor out. You have a fifth minute monitor out. Yes, yes. Um, you also have Genlock, so if you happen to be in a broadcast situation, you've got your Genlock control, you've got time code in. So yes, sound people, very easy to get to. That's not proprietary, standard BNC. Um, you've also got a remote, so if you wanted to hook this up to a paint box or any other sort of uh, broadcast situation, easy to get to. There is gonna be a Teradek that's coming out in a couple of weeks that will also allow you to communicate with LUTs and other stuff that's gonna go right about where the scatter box is. So, that makes this camera extremely versatile for a variety of productions, and that's why I got this. I can be in a motion picture, proper cinema environment. I can be in a documentary style environment, easy to use. I can pick up and shoot, and uh, the camera's ready to go. Thank you so much for watching my demo with my new Sony Venice digital cinema camera. I've had so much fun shooting with this new camera. I've got a few people to thank. I'd first like to thank Angelica. She's actually behind the camera right now. And I'd also like to thank Nick. He actually designed the lenses that I used for the anamorphic footage. I'd also like to thank Naomi. She did some of the modeling. And of course, Michael Melendez. He let me use his studio over at Blue Ribbon Digital Media. So thank you so much for letting me use, uh, use your space down there. Also, I'd like to thank Jen, who's doing the coloring, and Robert Stovey, who's doing the editing for this. This has been a great experience, and this is a wonderful camera, so I'm so looking forward to shooting more projects with it.